In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a merchandise item in the USAS eStore. This might be a club jumper, a pub crawl shirt, club pins, or any number of physical items that your club might like to sell. At USASA, we always recommend taking pre-orders for any products that you're going to sell in order to minimize the financial risk. So to get started, you're going to need to be in the store and products page, and then we'll click new at the top. This will open a box for us to enter our product details. So I'm going to start by entering the name. Um, I've included the name Cheese Fan Club Socks. It's really descriptive. I've also included the current year, 2020. Um, this will help me differentiate between current and past year products. Next, we enter a short description. This is less of a short description and more of a tagline. So I'm going to treat it like that. Next, I'm going to include the product details or a larger description. This is going to be pretty detailed as I want um, to include all the information people will need to know before ordering their socks. Um, and then we can use these um, tools here to format this information. So I'm including the price. Um, I'm including information about a discount. I'm including information about sizing. And I'm including additional information about uh, product collection, um, when sales will close by, uh, how people will find more information when they're ready to collect their socks, um, information about um, inclusions and what I'm doing with the profits. And finally, I'm including an email address for people to contact if they have any questions. And I'm going to create this uh, hyperlink for this. So I'll just enter that. Okay, now that that's done, we'll scroll down and we have two price boxes here. These price boxes uh, do different things. So on the left, the price box, this sets the actual base price for this product. So up here, I've noted that we've got two different prices. So I'm going to include the base price for this product here as $5. Uh, on the left, we've got the recommended retail price for this product. If these prices are different, it will show that there's a discount on the product. I'm going to include the upper price in the recommended retail price box. Below this, we have tax. You don't really need to do anything with this box. You can select tax-free if you wish, but GST isn't charged on any of um, the products on our e-store. So either way, it's not really relevant. On the right, we have two tick boxes. We have hidden to public. If this, was, if this is checked, the product will not be shown anywhere on the website. This is really handy if you're creating a product in draft and don't want anyone to see it yet. Um, but in this case, I want this to be published as soon as possible, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Below that, we have a box that uh, says unlisted. So this is about whether you want this product to appear on your club page. Uh, in the case of membership fees, you would leave this ticked, but I want to, this to be unticked as I want everyone to be able to see this product. Back on the right here, we have a sell until box. This is the date when this product will automatically be removed from the website. Up here, I've mentioned that pre-orders will close at midnight on the 1st of June. So that's the time that I'm going to set this to sell until. done now. Below that we have maximum order quantity. So this is the maximum number of items an individual person can buy. I don't want to limit anyone with this particular product so I'm going to include a ridiculous amount so that they can't possibly reach that cap. Next to that we have address. Because people are going to be collecting their socks I'm going to leave that at, as required if delivering. Below that, we have transfer account. This, you don't need to do anything with this box. USAS will arrange the transfers for you. Below that, we have, or to the right of that rather, we have product type. This is a physical product or a merchandise item, so we're going to leave that set to product. Now that I've included all of my information, I'm going to scroll back up and hit save. This will open up a series of fields for us to enter more information. I'm going to start by entering some images by selecting the browse box um, and including 
and image. Because I have two different product types, I'm going to include a picture of the other type of socks as well. Now that those are uploaded, I'm going to hit save. It's always important to save any changes you make as you go. Next, we have the style options tab. If you don't have style options, if there are no variations in your product, you're going to leave this as is. If say for instance, your product is something like a pin, every pin is the same, you don't need to add a style group. Because I have not only size options, but cover options as well, I need to add a couple of style groups here. So I'm gonna add the style group. And as in the example, I'm going to start with the color. Below that we have a box that is called type. Um, because this is a pre-order, this is going to be not tracked. Below that, we want to enter our style options. So as I mentioned, we have two different colors. We've got white socks and yellow socks. So I'm gonna enter as many fields, um, style options as I have in this particular section. To the right of this, we have an additional price box. So it's important to know that this price is additional to the price, the base price that you set on the product page. So as, as I mentioned in my description, the white socks are going to be $5. The base price is $5. So I don't need to enter an additional price in here. However, the yellow socks are $10, which is a $5 um, additional cost to the base price. So I'm going to enter $5 in here. And that will change the price um, when people select this option. I have another style group that I need to add for size. Again, this is going to be not tracked. And I have a couple of different sizes to enter. It's important that if you have, um, for instance, lady sizes and men's sizes, these need to be in the same group, style group. If they're in a different style group, people will be asked to enter both their lady size and their men's size, um, and that's not particularly useful um, if they only want one type of sock. There's no additional prices associated with any of these sizes, so I'm going to leave those as zero. I'm done with my style groups now, so I'm going to collapse that and hit save. Um, you can um, change the order of these, um, delete them by clicking X, delete any of your particular style options, or edit them um, using the text box. So it's very customizable there. Next, we have a box called custom fields. This will only apply if you have, for instance, um, you're, you've got a graduation jumper and you're including printed names on these jumpers. So um, in this example, I'm, I have an embroidered name that people will be including in their socks. So I'm going to enter embroidered name. And I'll show you what this looks like a bit later. I'm hit save to that change. The next tab is stock control. Because this is a pre-order, there are no limits to the number of socks people can buy. Um, we're going to leave that as no tracking. Next, we have restrictions. So you can use that if you only want a particular user type to be able to buy these socks. Say, for instance, you only wanted students to buy these socks. Um, you can also restrict people by if they have purchased a product. So for instance, if you only wanted paid club members to buy this product, you could add that as a purchase requirement. You could also, if you don't have a um, paid membership fee, um, you could add the club requirements and select your club. You have to be a member of this club to buy this product. Um, yeah, so there's a few different options in there. Um, but this is not where we enter discounts. To do that, we want to go to the discounts tab. So 
I've got a membership discount on this product. So I'm going to include the name of this discount. And I'm going to include a maximum discount order quantity of one. This means that only um, one discount will be applied per person um, off their first order. If we drop down here, we want to add the discount requirements. So we want the discount to be $5 and we're going to link that to the Cheese Fan Club membership fee. Um, you can add alternatives as well, um, but I'm happy with this now, so I'm going to hit save. We're not using forms for this product, so we can skip that. And then we have the communication tab. If once this product was ordered, you wanted to send an email to everyone, um, letting them know that the socks are ready for collection and where and when they can do that, um, you would hit new communication and that would open up an email field for you to enter. Next, we have the history tab. This is going to be very useful to you once this product has started selling, uh, but you don't need to do anything while you're setting the product up. Next, we have a completion email. This is completely optional, um, but I'm going to select to automatically send a completion email. So this is an email um, that will automatically be sent to anyone who buys this product. Okay, so I've entered my information and again, you can use these um, tools here to format this text. Um, I'm going to save that completion email. And finally, we have the notification, notification email tab. So this is where you would enter your email address if you'd like to receive an email every time someone buys one of your products. It's really easy and you can add as many um, no notification recipients as you wish. Okay. Now that I've done all of that, I've filled out all of the details, I want to hit submit now. This will arrange for an uh, email to be sent to the club's team, letting them know that there's a product to be approved. Once the club's team receive that email, they'll go in and have a look at your product and double check that it all makes sense. And from there, they will approve your product. When they approve your product, they'll send you an email to let you know that it's ready to approve, ready to sell. So if we go back to our products page, we can see that's submitted there now. I'm going to go away and approve this product and then come back and show you what that looks like. Now that the club team have approved my product, I can see that it's gone green and approved there. And if we go and select edit, we can go back into that product. It's really important that once a product is approved that you don't make random changes as you will need to re get this product re-approved. If you wanna make changes after the product has been approved, um, it's quicker to send the club's team an email and ask them to make that change on your behalf rather than um, going through the reapproval process. So I'm going to uh, not make any changes here and then go view. This is what the product will look like once it's up for sale. So we can see the club, um, the product name here, a little short description. There's a note that there's a membership discount on this product. And we have the option to select white socks for the original price of $5 or yellow socks for an additional $5. We can select our sizing here and we can include our name here um, to be embroidered on the product. They can add any number of quantities um, and all the product description information is here below. So to give you um, a look, 
show you what this looks like when people purchase the product. I'm going to select a pair of white socks and add those to the cart. Because I'm a paid member of the club, I've received the $5 discount on my first pair of socks. I'm going to go through the checkout um, so that you can see what this will look like in your product history. I'm hit next. Obviously, if there was a cost associated with this, that'd be the customer would be sent to payment methods, um, um, but we can see that's gone successful there now. So if we go back to the back end and go to the history tab, we can see I've now uh, sold one pair of socks. Um, item sold is one, revenue generated is zero because of that discount. Um, if you were selling this um, for money, you would um, have your total revenue listed there. We also have the option to export this history. So this is really handy um, and it's where you'll find the information relating to your style option sales. So I'm going to download that file and open up the Excel spreadsheet. And we can see that I have one white socks ladies S. Um, if there was multiple pairs of this, it would appear as quantity two or however many the person had purchased. If they had purchased a couple of different styles, that would appear here. Um, we also can see, oh, in a separate line item rather, um, we can see here the name that um, the customer entered in the um, custom field. Um, so that information is collected in this spreadsheet. Uh, and all their contact details will be collected here too, so that you can send them an email as well. So I'm going to click out of that um, and go back to the product. And that's pretty much all you need to know. So um, if you ever have any questions or issues when setting up a, a member product or a um, merchandise item for sale, get in contact with the club's team and we'll be able to help you.